Overwatch 2 is a team-based hero shooter with multiple core modes that you can play with a huge roster of characters. If you're new to Overwatch 2, haven't played the original game in a long time, or just want to brush up your knowledge on the support roster, this video should give you an idea of which support heroes you may want to play based off your playstyle. First, you need to understand the different types of support roles within the roster, because support is a lot more than just healing your teammates in Overwatch 2. Support heroes are primarily here to keep their teammates alive by healing, using their abilities, or offering some type of utility for their team. You must understand that playing support is a lot more than simply healing your team. You're here to make your teammates job easier, but the challenge is surviving long enough and creating enough opportunities for them to do so. As a support player, pay attention to what types of heroes your teammates are using and play the heroes that will match the team composition best. Using your tank as a reference, do your best to stick with the majority of the team without getting called out of position. You are the enemy team's priority target and the enemy DPS is going to focus on taking you out when the opportunity presents itself. You need to prepare and figure out a means to let your team know when you're in danger. Because without you, your team will make it far. Typically pinging down enemies targeting you will let your team know you're in danger and take your team's attention away from any tunneling and to help you. You can also communicate this as well, but pinging the enemy will physically let your team see exactly where the enemy is and alert them all with the sound cue. Communication is there, so take advantage of that ping system so your team can keep an extra eye on you to keep you safe. That being said, support heroes are split into main healers and off healers. Thus, the first thing we're going to talk about are main healers. The main value behind main healers is that they make up the bulk of healing for their entire team. These are support heroes that can heal their teammates with a strong burst of healing in a short period of time. Typically, these will be the support heroes that can heal tanks up very quickly from critical health while also being able to spread out heals for the team. At this time, your main healers are Ana. Baptiste, Moira, and Mercy. Ana is a burst healer with sniping capabilities capable of healing her teammates at any distance as long as she's got line of sight. Her method of healing her teammates is through her biotic rifle primary weapon. Each of her shots when fired at a teammate will heal them with an additional 70 health, but when fired at an enemy will simply do 70 damage. Her secondary fire allows her to zoom in with the sniper scope, giving her more opportunities to heal teammates farther away from her as long as she can hit her shots. This is a great tool for healing flankers that need a quick burst of healing farther away, it could be enough to shift a fight in your team's favor. For defensive purposes, she possesses a sleep dart. This ability gives her the means to put an enemy to sleep for 5 seconds, rendering them unable to move or attack unless woken up by a damage. This is an excellent tool to put someone to sleep and have a teammate nearby line up an easy headshot on your target. Most of the time this ability can be used against tracers, genji, sombras, but other times it can be useful against nano boosted enemies, high nooning cassidies, or other enemies using their ultimates. Her secondary ability biotic grenade is a powerful tool that when thrown at teammates heals them for an instant 100 health and for the next 3 seconds grants an additional healing buff. This is a perfect way to heal up teammates in either critical condition or taking heavy damage. On another hand, when throwing a biotic grenade at an enemy, it prevents them from receiving healing for 3 seconds. It is a strong ability against enemy tanks or other enemy targets being pocketed because it prevents healing. Her ultimate ability Nano Boost allows her to pick a single teammate and buff them with increased damage and damage resistance. Your buff teammate will deal out 50% more damage, so do not sleep on this ability. It is very strong when given to a player at the right time you know is going to deal a ton of damage. Typically, handing this off to DPS players about to utilize their ultimate is a great way to use the ability. Other times, a tank in the right position could also be enough as well. She's a great healer to use most of the time, but her amount of healing is largely dependent on whether you can make your shots or not. Be smart about how you use your abilities and make each shot count. Baptiste is also another burst healer capable of healing multiple teammates at once and keeping them alive. With a 3 round burst rifle as his primary fire, his method of healing is distributed out to his team via his biotic launcher, which is very similar to a grenade launcher, except this one dishes out 60 healing per healing grenade. When lobbing out a healing grenade, it will heal any teammates caught within the healing grenade's radius. So this is a great way to heal multiple teammates together when they're close to each other. To make it easier to lob out healing grenades from his biotic launcher, he possesses a passive ability called Exo Boots that charges his next jump whenever crouching, allowing you to jump great heights 
defense to reach high ground or heal your team from above. One of his core abilities is Immortality Field. Throwing this ability down prevents any teammates within from dying, locking them at 20% of their full health. The Immortality Field hovers at the center of a radius, and as long as your teammate is within that radius and line of sight of the ability, they cannot die. But Keep in mind that the enemy team can destroy this. As a defensive ability, he utilizes his regenerative burst ability, which, when triggered, affects teammates in immediate range of Baptiste. It heals Baptiste for 30 HP per second over 5 seconds, and his teammates for 15 HP per second over 5 seconds. So it can be helpful when your team is together for extra healing when paired with his biotic launcher. His ultimate ability, Amplification Matrix, creates a placeable kind of field that, when fired through by your teammates, buffs any hit scan or projectile damage or healing by 100%. Keep this in mind because most players forget that this ability also affects healing projectiles such as Baptiste's biotic launcher and his biotic rifle or even her biotic grenade. The amplification matrix can lead to some strong plays and any team would be foolish not to get out of its way with 100% damage buff. Baptiste is a strong support hero and more than capable of keeping his team up when utilizing his entire kit. He's fairly easy to play to be honest, so definitely a great introductory type of healer. Mora is one of my favorite support heroes, possessing a strong movement ability, powerful healing, lifesteal, and a flexible ultimate to support her team with healing or damage. Her primary method of healing is through her primary attack, Biotic Grasp. This enables her to cast out healing from her left hand. The heals distributed to her team through Biotic Grasp heal over a short period, so you don't need to hold it down the entire time. You can distribute it in bursts most of the time. Her Biotic Grasp also has a secondary purpose when used against an enemy. Keeping your enemy roughly near your reticle will drain your target of health over time, healing Moira and refilling a healing meter of sorts. You see, Moira must drain health in order to give it to her team. If her healing meter drops to zero, she'll be unable to heal her team with about a grasp. Finding the right balance between draining enemies and healing her team will be essential for her playstyle. Moira's Biotic Orb ability is a projectile ball of energy that Moira can decide to use for damage or healing, whatever purpose suits her best. It can be thrown out toward her target, and as long as they're nearby it, the orb will reach out to either heal or damage her target. The orb can heal up to 300 health or deal up to 200 damage, so it's very useful when combined with her Biotic Grasp. Fade is a fast movement ability she can use to disappear, become invulnerable, cleanse herself of any negative effects, and reposition herself. Jumping at any point toward her fade will increase her jump height, allowing her to travel slightly farther or reach higher areas with ease. A very useful ability Mora can use when in danger or to get closer to her teammate. Her ultimate ability, Coalescence, is a multi-purpose ultimate that either damages or heals depending on who it touches. It's a large beam that extends to wherever Mora is facing. It can be compared in similarity to a Kamehameha. It pairs up great during team fights when she's behind her team. Mora is a fairly easy hero to learn and a great support option for players more comfortable with playing damage. Mercy is a combat medic with angelic wings and a halo here to support her team with constant healing and increased damage. Utilizing her Caduceus staff, Mercy can distribute a constant flow of 55 healing per second or 30% damage boost to a single teammate at a time. She can swap between these different utilities without delay. So when attaching your beam to a teammate, be mindful of whether or not they could use extra damage or constant healing. Mercy does carry a pistol she can swap to, but its damage is mediocre and should be used as a last resort in protecting herself or an ultimate form to take out a vulnerable enemy. Being that her DPS output herself is low, it's better to damage boost a teammate that can do more when you have an opportunity. What makes Mercy so appealing to play for many Mercy players is her mobility. While I'm not able to showcase all the many different Mercy movement techs right now, just know that mastery of the skill can make her very challenging to eliminate and very mobile. And this is because of her guardian angel and passive ability. It allows Mercy to travel directly to her teammate in a linear path when in range. Passive ability allows her to glide, so when combined with guardian angel, you can glide at a faster speed or travel in various directions vertically or horizontally, allowing her to reach new positions. She also possesses the ability to resurrect any recent dead teammates, but she's vulnerable with doing so. Be sure to use it only during opportunities when you can get the res off and survive. Her ultimate ability, Valkyrie, 
changes her form and movement. For 15 seconds, she can fly in any direction and her healing or damage beams will chain to nearby targets, so you can affect your entire team if they're close together. Guardian Angel is also much faster when flying to teammates, and the movement tech skills associated also still work. She's a beginner level hero for support, and I recommend you give her a try if you're trying to get into support. Main healers are primarily here to keep their team alive, and they are the last line of support when your teammates are in critical condition. Next, we have off healers. These are the heroes that offer more utility or value to their kit other than just healing. These are heroes that may not be able to output as much healing compared to main healers, but provide enough utility to be an asset on the team. First, let's talk about Senyata, our favorite Omnic monk. He is a monster in the right hands and a good support hero to have on your team if you're playing DPS. Firstly, let's talk about his primary and secondary attack. Zenyatta is a projectile based hero that throws out orbs with his primary attack. His secondary attack can be charged up and released at an enemy for a ton of damage. My favorite part about Zenyatta is his Harmony and Discord. Harmony is an ability you can have out at any moment without any cooldown. Simply target a teammate within view and range then you can place it on them. The Orb of Harmony grants 30 healing per second when placed on a teammate, but when the line of sight between Zenyatta and his teammate is broken, the Orb of Harmony is recalled. Similar to the Orb of Harmony, the Orb of Discord can be placed on an enemy and it reduces their damage resistance to 30%, effectively allowing anyone on your team to do 30% extra damage to whoever has Discord placed on them. The interaction between Harmony and Discord is exactly why DPS players would love to have a Zenyatta on their team, especially flankers, because that constant healing will help them out a ton and the Discord Orb not only gives them a target, but makes their jobs DPS easier. With Zenyatta focusing your Discord on vulnerable targets, your team is focusing down and melting the enemy team and it's going to feel so satisfying. His ultimate ability transcendence grants an additional speed, invulnerability, but also anyone within the radius of his ultimate will receive 300 healing per second. It's not invulnerability, but it's still pretty close as teammates can still be one shot within that ultimate. This ultimate is a terrific counter for many of Overwatch's offensive ultimates. Save transcendence for team fights when the enemy team uses ultimates such as Genji's Dragon Blade, Zarya's Graviton Surge, Reaper's Death Blossom, etc. You counter these ultimates perfectly as Zenyatta and an experienced player won't activate them until you use your ultimate or you have been eliminated, so keep this in mind. Be mindful, because Zenyatta's base movement speed is slower than other heroes, so he suffers in mobility, making him vulnerable to flankers. When you notice a flanker is targeting you, you've got to let your team know before it's too late. Despite the lack of mobility, he for sure makes up for it in utility. Definitely a hero you want to check out. Next, let's talk about our favorite DJ Lucio. Lucio is so useful, he's almost always a good pick for the team. This is because of his individual mobility and AoE healing per second. First, let's talk about his passives. Lucio possesses a wall ride passive that grants him 30% extra speed while riding walls. Just hold your jump button against any nearby wall and he should wall ride against it. This wall ride can even go around corners with ease, so it's a great movement ability to stall objectives, reach a teammate faster, or escape a bad situation. You'll also notice his song surrounded by either a green or yellow line circle around Lucio. Any teammates within Lucio's song will either be granted the effects of his speed or healing buffs. Using his crossfade ability allows you to switch Lucio's active song between constant healing and speed buffs. With these abilities, Lucio can heal his team up as long as they're grouped around him. You're going to want to stick either with the team's tank or primary DPS to give that support. His amp it up abilities increase the effectiveness of his current song as well as allowing him to do up to 52 healing per second or a 60% speed buff. You can also switch songs midway through his amp it up as well. So in critical situations, use this ability well. Really, you just wanna keep your teammates in the fight in the right position and to help them out when it looks like they might be in trouble by giving them speed to get back with the team or healing when needed. His primary fire emits multiple projectiles that try travel slowly, but actually deal decent damage, so they are worth shooting at tanks or even squishies. Keep in mind that his headshot damage rivals even Zenyatta's despite Lucille's role. However, the hidden trick to Lucille's secondary fire, Soundwave, is in its knockback ability. If you can hide around corners or positions on the map where enemies can fall off the map, Lucio can knock them back and to their death, if done correctly. You might want to tilt your aim upwards as well to keep them in the air for just a few milliseconds longer. His ultimate ability, Soundbeer, grants it's a massive pool of overhealth for a brief period, but keep in mind it only affects teammates within line of sight 
and range. Plus Lucio must hit the ground when he drops the beat, so keep that in mind when you activate the ability from higher ground. Similar to Zenyatta, Lucio's ultimate is also considered a defensive ultimate, which can and will save your team from offensive enemy ultimates such as Dragon Blade, Death Blossom, or Graviton Surge. Arguably, Lucio can also play the role of main healer on the team when played to utter perfection. But I think off healer is a bit more appropriate for players in the majority of the competitive ranks. Now let's talk about Brigida. She's a brawler kind of support where you must deal damage in order to effectively heal your team. She's meant to be played up close at the front lines with her tank to keep everyone in that immediate range alive and on the objective. She does this with her rocket flail primary attack, a uh, melee type of weapon. When hitting enemies with her rocket flail, she will grant healing to allies within a 20 meter radius of her. The healing given from this is similar to Lucio's AoE healing, but a bit more effective. Because of this, she can be a challenge to kill and can go toe to toe with DPS. She can also target teammates to give them repair packs which apply automatically, granting your teammate healing for a brief duration. She gets to carry three repair packs at a time but there is a six second cooldown between each charge, so try to hold on to at least one for emergencies. Her whipshot ability is a long distance kind of throw for her rocket flail. It's meant to target a specific enemy, will do some damage but has strong knockback capability. Could even knock someone off the map. It's good in niche situations like a reaper getting ready to use death blossom or or Cassidy somewhere up high getting ready to high noon. For defensive means, she is quite the utility. Similar to Reinhardt, she possesses her own shield which can withstand a decent amount of damage before it breaks. After breaking, the shield does recharge over time so it can be used quite often. The shield helps get close to enemies or allows her time to back off for safety. While the shield is out, she can use her shield bash ability to dash forward. It can also be used against an enemy dealing about 50 damage. It can be used as a tool for mobility as much as it can be used defensively. Her rally the ultimate allows Brigida to move faster and grants extra overhealth for a brief period. You'll want to use the ultimate before a team fight or engagement as it essentially makes your teammates a bit more tankier, allowing them to take a little bit more damage. Utilizing Brigida as a frontline support always in the fight is the key to her playstyle. You'll be surprised at how much damage she can dish out as well. Finally, Kiriko, our new addition to the roster, is an aggressive kind of support hero that works great with brawler kind of team comps where the team is constantly fighting. She should be paired with a team that sticks together and with DPS that returns to the team after diving. First, let's talk about her passive ability. Kiriko brings value in her evasiveness. She can climb walls like Genji or Hanzo, capable of reaching high ground or other positions. She does a ton of headshot damage with her kunai primary attack, capable of two-shotting most 280 HP heroes if lined up with their head. Her primary attack is a single kunai throw. It's a projectile that travels relatively slow over time to its target, so you're going to want to aim for the head the majority of the time to get value out of this weapon to charge your ultimate faster. A single headshot from her kunai does 120 damage, while a body shot only does 40 damage. It's pretty effective when using it in a long range capacity for headshots when your team is stacked. Her method of healing is in her healing talismans. When activated, she throws them out toward whichever teammate she's targeting for a burst of healing. This healing is not enough to consistently heal up a whole team, but it's effective in healing direct teammates in a dangerous situation without putting Kiriko herself at too much risk and giving her time to her sister teammate in their fight. Her swift step ability makes this job a bit easier, allowing her to teleport directly to an ally even if they're behind a wall. It's an extremely useful teleport ability that only adds to her evasiveness, making her a bit more challenging to eliminate at times. It allows her to also charge her ultimate up during standstills by keeping her team as an anchor to teleport to. This ability can be used to save a teammate stuck in a corridor or to get out of a bad situation. She has another ability called Protection Suzu. It acts like a cleansing grenade of sorts if that makes it easier to understand. Throw out her Protection Suzu and wherever it lands, an effect is dispersed to teammates nearby, making them briefly invulnerable and removing most negative effects, such as stuns or hacks, and it adds a bit of healing. It's one of her strongest abilities and its utility is incredibly flexible. Rather than throwing it out randomly, think about key situations where it can be useful. It is on a long cooldown, so better to use it for its purpose. Her Kitsune Rush ultimate ability launches a lane forward that accelerates movement speed, attack speed, and cooldowns of all teammates. When under the effects of this ability and cooldown of all teammates, teammates within its lane. When under the effects of this ability, use your cooldowns y'all, because you're essentially given at least double your abilities when under the effects of Kiriko's ultimate. Double! The increased attack speed is also helpful in increasing DPS output. It's a very offensive ultimate to take advantage of it when you can. Kiriko is a hard support hero in my opinion, so make value value utility where possible for the team. Support heroes are some of the hardest things to play, so I have a ton of respect for support mains for dealing with the increased aggro whilst keeping their teams alive. Whether you want to focus on healing 
healing directly or to bring some unique utility to the team, there's a support hero for you. Follow me on Twitch if you want to beat me and see some Overwatch gameplay. It's a very friendly community and it's a chill stream to have up during your downtime. Be sure to join up in my Discord if you want to chat with me or my community. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and let me know in the comments below which supports you're going to play. Take it easy and peace out.